dental care in pets. Um, this is one of my passions. I feel very strongly about dental care in pets. I am not a dental specialist, but I do spend a lot of time at the seminars that are put on by the dental specialists over in uh, Tustin. And um, again, it's one of those things. It's just a no-brainer. Teeth care, I mean, we go to the hygienist every six to 12 months. Our dogs, every one of their years is eight years of ours. So we're seeing six, seven-year-old dogs that are effectively nearly 50 years old. They've never been to the hygienist. And we're expecting these pets to live long, happy, healthy life with a full set of teeth. That's not probably going to happen um, unless we do something about it. So I am a very strong advocate for um, prophylactic or preventative teeth cleanings. And I truly do believe, after all the extra education and curricular activities that I've received, is that the only way you can do a effective teeth cleaning um, to the point where we are removing or preventing periodontal disease is with an anesthetic procedure. I know a lot of clients have a hard time still with putting pets under anesthesia. And I absolutely understand it. I am, my dogs are my babies. When they go under anesthesia, I feel the same things. I'm human too, and I obviously am nervous. But at the same time, I have to weigh out the pros and the cons. You know, do I want my dog's teeth to never get cleaned and have them be seven, eight years old, and all of a sudden their breath is disgusting, they have abscesses in their mouths, teeth are rotting and falling out of their mouths. I can't even begin to imagine how painful that is. I mean, when I get any dental work done, I'm the first one to have local anesthetic put in there. I don't want to be feeling dental pain. So the thought of my dogs going through dental pain um, all the time, going unnoticed, and they're not going to tell me, because let's face it, we don't really stop eating because we have a cavity. Um, we'll keep eating, we'll just chew on the other side. It's going to hurt still, but oh well. Um, that just really makes me sad more than anything else. And anesthesia is so good nowadays. We do pre-anesthetic blood work, which is something that usually as a human being, you don't even get run on you before you go for an anesthetic procedure. We have sevoflurane um, out there now. It is one of the safest anesthetic gases around. It's, I think, one in 10,000 chance of having a complication under anesthesia. And so that's very small in comparison with the risk associated with periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is the silent killer in the veterinary world. You, unfortunately, are going to have so many things associated with dental disease, like liver disease, kidney disease, heart valve disease. The list is endless, um, you know, inflammatory gut issues. And so we have to be thinking more about these preventative teeth cleanings under anesthesia. Now, there is a very, very large um, push within the companies that provide non-anesthetic dental cleanings, and they're selling it to clients as obviously being safe because there's no anesthesia involved. Well, it's safe but it really is purely cosmetic procedure. So I often have to have these discussions with clients really more to put their mind at ease about going under anesthesia and educating them about the fact that you can't go into an awake dog or cat's mouth with an ultrasonic scaler and get underneath those gums, which by the way is where the periodontal disease is. It's not sitting on the surface of the teeth, it's underneath the gums, that's where the bad smell's coming from. And have them sit there and think that that's okay because they're not gonna think that's okay. And there are four sides to a tooth, front, back, side to side. Those big back teeth in the back, there's no one gonna to get to those big back teeth in the back and get underneath those gums in an awake animal. And it's not fair to ask an animal to be awake to do that procedure. So there is a level of discomfort associated with a proper teeth cleaning. I know this, you all probably know this too. So we're gonna put them under anesthesia, we're gonna clean their teeth properly, and the more we take care of this, the less time they have to be asleep. So we really don't want to wait till there's a problem to anesthetize them and have them be asleep for a long time because now we have to do an extraction or a root canal or a sealant or something. We'd really rather get them in on a routine basis, clean them up, have them asleep for 20, 30 minutes, wake them up. And um, the studies now are showing that these pets that we are preventatively cleaning their teeth properly under anesthesia are living 25% longer. If you're talking about a pug that's expected to live maybe 12 years, add another three years onto your pug's life. That's 15 years. That is huge, huge. If I can get three extra years 
out of my dogs and they're happy and healthy with no oral pain, I'm going to take it. So it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like the non-anesthetic cleanings are doing people an injustice because they're not taking the time to educate people that this is purely cosmetic. And as nice as those white teeth look, if they're not healthy underneath the gum line, it's really doing nothing for the medical benefit of your pet. Um, and understand as well, with the smaller breeds, there's a genetic component. So you can be at home brushing those teeth every single day, and if there's you know, overcrowding or malalignment, or your dog is smaller than 15 pounds, unfortunately, genetics is against you. Um, and no matter how much brushing or chewing that the dog does at home, you're still gonna need that preventative teeth cleaning. But that's something that your vet's gonna be happy to talk to you about and educate you about.